All right, here we go. Gangster Boo from 3-6 Mafia. Welcome back to Vlad TV. I'm fucking shy right now. <laughs> <laughs> Gangster Boo is shy. Who would have thunk it? Who would have thunk uh, it? I don't know. Maybe Glad. Glad. <laughs> maybe Glad. Glad. I'm sorry, Glad TV. Where are Welcome Glad, to Glad TV. TV. Yeah, I don't know Glad anymore. There we go. There we go. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. And let's the first go. thing we have to talk about is the 3-6 Mafia versus Bone Thugs and Harmony. It just happened a few days ago, and things went a little bit left. What do you during mean? the course of it. You know what I mean. I don't. I'm asking. <laughs> the fight that broke out. Okay, so let me ask you. Before, before the verses really started, what was really the vibe and everything else like that? Well, let's go back. You said everything went left. What do you mean? And the, I fight, be... the fight that broke out. That was left? That was left. Really? Yeah. But we've been like going at each other for like 20 something years. You didn't expect that? Well, I didn't expect the actual physical altercation. Mm, it was stage, guys. I don't think so. <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Yeah, no. Um, walking into it, it was a, a mind blowing experience, bro. Yeah? Yeah. Are you absolutely. excited? I wasn't even able to process it mm. until way after it happened, to be honest. And like in terms of 3 Six Mafia being on stage with all the members together, is that like something that hasn't happened in a long time? Or fuck with my nose, right? <laughs> um, what do you mean? Well, I mean, because everyone was there, right? All the members. You know what? For me, when people say all the members, it's just kind of hard for me to fathom that because Lord is past yeah, and right. Coop is not in the the, yeah. the earthly realm or yeah. whatever. But in, in forms of terms of Juicy J, is that what you mean? Well, I mean, Paul, Jay, I mean, you were there, Christ, the chat, yeah. kind of like a busy project, bone at the bone show. You know, Project Pat, like, you know what I'm saying? Like all the kind of affiliated, you know, members and so forth. Well, we did that 2019. Aha, uh-huh. um, okay. So that's what I'm saying. So Atlanta. Two years ago. Yep. But, but COVID, honestly, bro, I forgot it was like about to be 2022. That yeah. You, yeah. So, you know, we did um, Atlanta. One Music Fest, I think that's what it's called, right? Mm-hmm. And then we did um, Lander Center in South Haven, Mississippi. And it was supposed to be more stuff going on in 2020, because that was the end of 2019. Yeah. And after that, that was that COVID hit. Okay. So the verse starts, and you know, I watched most of it. What do you mean, most of it? Most of it. What's most, most of, it? of it? Well, I watched probably... I mean, because it was long. It was about an hour and a half. Um, but what's I probably the most watched part about an watch? hour. I watched a Did good you skip? Were you like a clipper skimming through? I mean, certain songs. What song? Know, bone, a bo- a bone of 3-6. More so Bone. Because, you mm. know, when Bone first started, a lot of the songs I wasn't really familiar with. You know, I'm not a Bone super fan. I mean, I know they're big songs, but a lot of the early Bone songs in that verse, I was like, I don't, I don't really know that song. You know, I think it was great for the Bone fans, like the hardcore fans, but for the general public, it seemed like 3-6 Mafia, especially in the beginning, had bigger songs coming out the gate. I mean, would you agree with me? Um, being biased, yes. But being a Bone fan, it's kind of like when I watched it, fucking like five days after it happened, mm-hmm. I was like, yo, they jamming. Because I like harmonies and I like arrangements and yeah. stuff like that. So that's just me personally. Okay. So it goes on and the verses goes. And then out of nowhere, Busy Bone gets on the mic and said... Y'all ugly motherfuckers ain't going to be mocking me while I'm on stage. And then he starts to say, gangster boo. And then Juicy J says, suck my dick. That's not true, Glad. That's Glad. not what happened? That's not true, Glad. Okay. What happened then? Well, he didn't. That's not That's not how it happened, Glad. What happened was, no, Um, it was like, honestly, so when I walked down the stage, it was, for me, gangster boo, Lola Mitchell speaking. It was a fucking surreal experience. It was amazing. It was like, oh shit, when I walked out, I was like, I can't even turn around now. I'm on a stage with legends. Like, I mean, I have um, moments where I'm like, yo, bitch, you gangsta boo. You the boo print. Like, straight up, like, no cap. Those are my moments, you know? And so when I walk out and see them, I'm like, oh shit, I can't turn around. So it was more like, I'm here. So we fucking, we edit. More of a versus type of vibe. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um. I don't know. What was your question? Well, I told you, you know, I watched the video and I literally wrote down what was said. Oh, and you, okay. No, no, okay, 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 boom. Happened. Okay, yeah, no. It was like what he said, then what Jay said, then it was the gangster boot. But people don't know the context behind that. Explain it. I can't. You can't explain it. Uh, 
Well, okay. Maybe. In terms of what I saw well, online. Well, the, the gangster boo stuff, right? He does say he does say your name, though. Facts. And right? I spoke with him, so I know what he told me, what he was going to say. You spoke to him after the fact or before? After. after. Okay. And, yeah, and, a few times. Okay, go ahead. But it's like, you know what I'm saying? The thing, what I told, like, it was the throwing stuff for me. I don't care what you was going to say or what you didn't say. It was like, the throwing stuff is like, everybody have triggers, you know? And it was a scary moment to see my multimillionaire <laughs> friends, like, and I don't, I don't even remember it. I remember it when I watched it. Okay, well, Juicy J says, suck my dick. <laughs> and then... He said, nigga, suck my dick. And then he said, drop the shit. Right. <laughs> which I'm not going to say. Uh, so <laughs> according to Crunchy, according to Crunchy, because I just interviewed him. Yeah, you did. I saw Busy, him. Busy had a, had a bottle in his hand. And originally, you know, Crunchy said that he wanted to just throw water on y'all. But then I guess the cap didn't come off. So then he ended up just throwing the whole bottle. And then once the bottle got thrown, all hell broke loose. Busy threw, what, a water bottle? Yeah, at first he slung the wall. And like, you know what I'm saying? It's kind of yeah. like he tried to take the top of Luke because I was watching him. And then he slung the water. And then since the top didn't actually come off the water, he ended up throwing it after Juicy was saying, suck my dick. The thing about CB, he an observer. He was in the back the whole time watching and peeping. That's what he do. I Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just shocked. So I don't even know nothing about bottle caps being twisted or... Like, oh God, I don't even remember none of that, I right. swear. But he did throw a bottle at y'all. Yeah, I know now. I mean, well, I knew a bottle, but then I saw Mike. When I saw it back, I was like, oh, it was two things. I was like, well, that's crazy. Now, in terms of- He had of, a moment. He had a moment. Yeah. From what I've seen online, and it's hard for me to really make this out because based on the camera angles, they were Those saying- There were so many camera angles. <laughs> well, they were saying how he said that because you were slow dancing. Who said that? I just seen it online. Oh, you and you, know. you and Juicy J were slow dancing no, while he was performing. Glad, no, glad. No, you know it wasn't no me and Jay. It was me and Paul. We were slow dancing to you, one of their you records. And Paul. Okay, there yeah. we go. So you and DJ Paul, DJ Paul King, yeah. You and Paul were, Paul. I guess, slow dancing, and then that or pissed somebody called it the waltz. I saw that online. The waltz. So I said the waltz. <laughs> What's the waltz? Y'all were waltzing. <laughs> yeah, it was like it was waltzing. I was like, what the fuck is a waltz? So you and What's... Paul were waltzing while that's Bo what somebody was said performing. But it was in good spirit. Keep in mind, I'm a fan. I'm a fan of Juicy, Paul, Crunchy, me. Definitely Crazy Bone. I'm on Crazy Bone first album and his most recent album. Ah, Like, okay. I mean, it's Bone Thugs and Harmony. Are you kidding me? Yeah. We was on their time. We were in LA. Easy's yeah. home, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Okay. So at that point, a I'm fight breaks like, out. <laughs> I see everyone rush in. According why to Crunchy. Did, why did a fight break out? Because a bottle got thrown. How many? I saw one. Is there more than one bottle that got thrown? I don't know. You only saw, did you see a mic be thrown? Like, I'm watching it. How you watching it? I, I thought it was just a bottle being thrown. I didn't know the mic got thrown. Okay, well, maybe it was. I don't know. Maybe I was, was just watching it, it too. Um, like, seriously, I don't know, man. This shit happened. I got to watch it again. I only saw it twice. Everyone rushed. Both sides rushed in. Yeah. According to Crunchy, a couple people got tapped. <laughs> His words, not mine. A few people got tapped. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to say tap because he really wasn't no. Uh, I'm finna go knock this guy head off or it really wasn't no, um, I'm really trying to fight these guys. Uh-huh. Did you see anyone get tapped? Whatever CB said. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, but on some real shit, no, I like, literally, I didn't, it, like, I'm just being honest, bro. Like, I don't even remember. It's so freaky in my mind how I don't even remember even him saying what he said. I'm just being 100% No, I believe honest. you. I mean, yeah. I mean, it when you're in the so, moment, you don't, the adrenaline's pumping and, you know, I get it. I yeah, get it. Especially on a stage that big and so forth. I, I get it. And also, plus, I didn't expect it, you know? I didn't expect it because, you know, I, I didn't expect fights. Like, damn. I, I haven't seen Juicy and Paul fight in a while. Well, when the fight started to break out, you got on the mic. You mm. said, Busy Bone, you a hater. You must have not taken your pills. Fuck wrong with your bitch ass, you weird ass. Oh no, I didn't Call say Call him a wrong. sissy ass. Oh, uh, Vlad, Vlad. You said we Busy going, Bone Vlad? gonna ruin your career. You better, you better without him. Fuck him. Hold on, do I have like? Is my baby has laid, honey? <laughs> okay, no. What? So what? So you were saying all that stuff while this was happening. Okay. I mean, it's right there on on the mic. I know. I'm saying okay. okay. So then, so then the fight 
gets broken up. And but you 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 kind of said that. But why? Well, so I said that in what? Well, I mean, you were saying it. I'm just and I'm just I'm just telling you the the chain of events that started I happening. I was there. I know. I okay. saw it. Were you really upset at that point to to say all those things? Upset in what way? Upset that there was a fight breaking out during the middle of your verses for the first verses to ever have a fight. I was out. overwhelmed. I was like shocked. I was like, damn, this shit is gonna be over with. Because typically when a fight break out, the shit gets shut down. Right. So I'm in my zone. Like the things I said, it wasn't attacking anyone's trauma or anything. Everybody have their own traumas and stuff like that. Hey, I'm not perfect. I'm not swinging from the fucking best tree that fucking branches all the fucking red apples. Is branch the right word? <laughs> or if I can produce all the red apples. But yeah, I was mad as fuck because something got thrown at us. Yeah. I mean, who wouldn't be mad? I I'd mean, mad. I'm from Memphis. Yeah. I feel you. I'm from Memphis. I'm from Memphis. Sorry, well, I have triggers. The show ends up proceeding. And then Busy Bone... Which is a great thing. Busy Bone grabbed the mic and said, I want to apologize to everyone the fuck out there on both sides. Mm -hmm. I'm not trying to fuck this shit up. Pardon me. Let's keep the motherfucking party going. Thanks. When he said that, how'd you feel? I felt like, man, there's some real boss shit going on because, I mean, we just lost Young Dolph to some dumb shit. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And everybody, like, I felt it was some real adulting shit going on. Yeah. I felt like, wow, you know? My rants on the mic was just my rants. It wasn't personal. I've been knowing them for a very long time. Mm -hmm. It's context behind everything, what people don't know. Yeah. It was more of some, motherfucker, you fucking up this shit. So, of course, when I saw them do that. But he was still wrong for throwing something. Absolutely. You threw something. He wrong for that. He know that. I told him that. Um, But when I saw that, it was like, wow, this is a moment in hip hop. And I'm a part of it. It was a blessing for me. Yeah. It's like, wow, I'm fucking with Bone Thugs. <laughs> already a three from Swap here. Well, it kept going. According to, uh, to DJ Paul, he did like an like a interview afterwards. He said that, I guess there were six songs left, but it got cut short. Okay. Okay. You're not, you weren't involved in the, I guess, the Well, song. no, I'm, yeah, I am just said, okay, so what? Okay, cool. Oh. Um, I didn't know, like. Yeah. Like, I wanted to do, like, you have a question behind that? Well, no, I mean, I'm just, I'm just, you know, talking about what happened. to kind of, like, lay out the story for people that go back and actually watch it. Um, you know, and, you know, Crunchy Black said that that was actually some real stand-up shit that Busy Bone did by getting on the mic and, and apologizing. You know, Busy took the mic and said, I want to apologize to everyone the fuck out there on both sides. Right. I'm not trying to fuck this shit up. Pardon me. Let's keep the motherfucking party going. Right, right, right. And then boom. Yeah, which I right think, which, which I was thinking that uh, that's some stand up nigga shit. You know what I'm saying? No, if you can only, if everyone took ownership of uh, shit they do and they know it ain't right, yeah. they should apologize and they should own up to it. He didn't have to do that. He could have just You know what? Left Dude and... fucked up and he was like, you know what? I ain't trying to, f yeah, I mean, yeah, duh. It's like people make mistakes. And all this council culture shit, it's so, it's honestly, it's so bizarre for me. I mean, you are part of the council. They want to counsel you yeah. fucking every day, all day. Every day. You know? And um, he here, made, though. huh? I'm still here though. <laughs> and he made a, a mistake or whatever he want to call it. And yeah, of course, man, there's some real, they, they, they mean at the end of the day. So you and Busy talked afterwards? Yes. Can you share how the conversation went? <sighs> it went, it, it, it was, it was just us communicating. Because I've been knowing him. Um, that was my actually second time seeing him in person. Mm. Well, maybe third, but I was younger. But second time as an adult type shit. And um, I don't know much about him. You know what I'm saying? But just to, I never want to disrespect someone I admire or someone that I feel is dope as fuck. And he felt the same way. And I'll leave it like that. Yeah. And, you know, look, at the end of the day, uh, both crews really fuck with each other because Paul actually has a project coming out with Crazy Bone. Yes, and I'm on Crazy Most Recent Project. There you go. So, so the two of you guys, you know. And his first album, he had the jacket on. Crazy Bone's um, jacket was Thug Mentality, his first album. Mm -hmm. We have a song on there, Me, Him, and E-40. Ah. In like 1998. Got it. I'm the motherfucking blueprint. Well, yeah, I mean, the first time that I heard any level of friction between Bone Thugs and 3-6 Mafia was on the Biggie song. Uh, really? Yeah. You know, when you when never Busy... heard live by your rep? Nope. Wow. When, when, when Busy Bones said triple six rivals. Why did people think that was about us? Triple six rivals? 
But where did that come from? Where do you think that came from? I, I, I don't know. You've never heard Live By Your Rep? I haven't heard that. Well, live Cap By Your Rep. Glad. Who? I'm serious. Glad Wait, who's, you cap now. Live By Your Rep. Whose song is that? Three Six Mafia, Live By Your Rep, Glad. Okay. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, I'm, holding. I'm holding. I'm on the hold phone. On. All right. I'm holding. Three Six Mafia, Live By Your Rep, Bone Disc. You there never you heard this? I haven't heard that one. The so you just one. assumed the Biggie jump was about us. Wow, glad. Damn. Okay, that came out in 95. That way, uh-huh. Okay, and, and the Biggie joint came out, was it 90? So where do you think everything spun from? I have no it was idea. some childhood shit on some real shit, bro. Motherfuckers like, oh, they took our sound. You know, just nothing. That's what you I know? assumed, you know? That's what I assumed. Yeah, you because know. Because well, Bone Thugs and like Coops Twister and was going at it at one point over the style thing, you know? It's just like um, innovators, just like a bunch of creatives and innovators not even knowing the innovators and creatives and just young and a yeah. bunch of men. Dude, I'm a girl, bro. I don't have a dick. That was them niggas <laughs> beefing this shit. <laughs> I ain't got to do with this shit. I ain't got a motherfucking water bottle throw it at me. Yeah. Yeah. Well, at the end of the day, it all worked out. It was a, it was a success. Beyond. Who do you think won? You know, if you were to take yourself out of the equation and look at it, just as a hip hop great fan. question. Who do you think I'm, I'm gonna call you Vlad for this one. Okay. Great question, Vlad. Like seriously, um, I would say. So when I when I watched the verses for myself, mm -hmm. I was just like, I was kind of like, damn, it was because you know, you have Bone fans, you have Three Six fans, you know. So I don't know if my timeline was full of Three Six Mimpians or not, but when I watched it myself, I was like, well, Bone doing that thing. Cause I'm a fan, so I don't know if I'm being biased, but one I would have to say, uh, we was more crunk, you know, and it's like you know we was just crunk, man. Well, I just feel like Bone was on some Crossroads shit. I mean, listen, I mean Bone has huge songs. Crossroads is right. We do too. I mean, I mean, would well, you, would at you least say not that? even okay, we? Here's an interesting oh, question. let me just say, let me say Go one ahead. thing, friend. I feel like what I don't like to see is motherfuckers on some um for the moment knocking like the whole like bone versus the world instead of bone versus three six as far as versus yeah not personal right it's not paul and juicy's fault that you know they brought i guess too i thought that was what versus was about i don't know maybe i'm confused maybe i ain't seen the verses i thought you supposed to bring out guests and show out you know oh, yeah. they triple threats produce rap dj i mean is that I felt like Crunch said, just because you sound with easy, don't mean it's going to be easy. <laughs> Crunch said, they're glad, not me. <laughs> I fuck with them, though. <laughs> well, listen, I'm glad it happened. I'm glad it ultimately <laughs> got finished. I'm glad it didn't get shut down after the, the throwing of the bottle. And uh, I think it was a classic night for hip hop. And I think everyone won. I was spooked, surreal, not spooked on some, something, thinking something was going to happen. I was just beyond honored to even be on that fucking stage to be honest i couldn't even believe it yeah just to be honest like what the fuck and then i was the center of attention there you go yeah i was well, i mean uh, not even with the rumors that's just what behind the scenes busy tell me <laughs> uh, unfortunately young dolph just got killed you and dolph how well did you know each other assassinated uh how well did you two know each other um damn i don't want to tear up <laughs> it's just like um, you know me and Drama Boy have a really close relationship right. and um, he was coming through Atlanta just getting beats from Drama and so I, I just remember his mixtapes like the Welcome to Dolph what was it like Welcome to Dolph World or and I was like who the fuck is this long nigga this nigga right calling himself Dolph <laughs> I remember seeing like and I just kept seeing that shit. And I, he kept coming with his own money. And, you know, he wasn't like begging for beats and shit like that. And so I know him from that. I, I never fucking ate dinner with him. I've never, could, you know, um, said happy birthday to him on the phone. But we've been, I mean, I'm gangsta boo. So it's like I'm top tier in Memphis right. type shit. Yeah. So it's like as far as the three six mafia goes. So anybody under that, of course, I'm a. They're gonna respect me. So it's like a respect thing, and he just. That's how I know him. 
his fucking rise. It was just, I've never seen nothing like that before. Well, especially independent the whole time. I've never seen nothing like that before. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, so, yeah. I don't, I don't, you know, his family, you know, they know him more than me. Yeah. I mean, it's sad. He leaves behind two kids. And it seemed like once he got killed, it just started a whole bad chain of events. What because, do you mean? Well, because at the, you know, at the place where he got killed, someone uh-huh. else got shot. Like a what they got to do with Dove? Well, I mean, I'm just saying. Been, it's, Memphis it's, been hot. They found his car a few blocks away. Not his car. Well, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. They, they found the car that allegedly killed, you know, the, the, the drivers that killed him yeah. was driving around. Hot boy shit. Facts. They found it, by, you know, in this like abandoned house. And then right by that abandoned house, someone else gets killed. Man. I'm not saying the whole thing is related, I, but I'm I, saying. I already know. It's like, it's ironic. It's, it's kind of it's, like. It's a mess. It's a mess. It's a mess. And you, and you know, know what? what I mean? That police got, were yeah, like, you know uh, what? The streets are the streets. Yeah. I mean, the police were, were uh, had to be posted up in front of um, uh, Yo Gotti's restaurant. And and I mean, listen. You know Memphis more than I have, more than I do. I've never even been to Memphis. Uh, well, you're talking a lot about it. So yeah. you've never been to Memphis. I've never been to Memphis. Well, you should speak on it. Well, come you know, on, visit I got, the city. I got friends from Memphis. Well, yeah, me. You, <laughs> you, you visit the city because it's Paul not. The thing crunchy. is, it's not. It's not like everywhere is bad. I mean, look what's going on in L.A. Well, I'm just saying, in like a two square block radius Ooh, of this particular two, situation, yeah, yeah. it was assassin. Yeah, there was there bad. was two bad. deaths in a shooting. You know what I mean? Like right yeah. there. I don't know if it's related. I don't. You know, yeah, it's not yeah, my but business, Memphis, but I don't Memphis know what I'm get a lot of like just random ratchet shit goes on in small cities. Yeah, and it's a tragedy what happened to him. Very much so. And um, very much it's so. Like I, I honestly, I can't even really wrap my. Like I'm a fan of Key Glock. Like yeah. it's just like freaky to me. You know what I'm saying? Like freaky, freaky. You no, know, because I lost Lord Infamous, Coopsters. My father is there. I lost my brother. So all kind of stuff going on with me as well. You know, so to lose someone like that. But um, like honestly, like it, it, and I was um, that happened right as I was prepping for the verses. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it was it's sad, man. It's sad. I ain't gonna lie. I Tragic. was um, trying to just watch a video that I typically watch the other day and just like tears, you know, um, his engineer is one of my cool friends. His name Pat. He engineered a lot of stuff for Hypnotize Mind, Paul and Juicy 36, Mop. Um, both were a Star 69 project. And so he was, you know, he's um, Dolph engineer. Like, it's like so many people are affected that's within the inner circle. So, if I didn't know certain things, it's like it just hit different. No, of course, of course. It's, it's a tra- How did you feel? Um, well, I mean, I, I never met him. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. I never. I literally have yeah, never. Yeah. I have never met him. So, are you tired of like, um, not tired, um, but like the, the, the like, um, four hundred? What's his name? Slim four hundred. Yeah. Have him, him I interviewed. Him? He sat in the same chair you, you you're sitting so in right now. So, how do you feel? Do you like how do you feel about like what they call black on black crime? I mean, I mean, it fucks me up. Cause it's, I mean, but it fucks it's all me kind up. of crime, right? But they yes. only promote that, right? Well, I mean, it fucks me up when people I interview end up getting violently killed as young Random. young black men. You know, I mean, the number of young black men that I have personally interviewed that have died violently through gunfire. It's the gunfire. It's like me. about a dozen people that I've interviewed personally that I've sat down with and, and some of which that I've even- li- I'm sorry. I, I cut you no, off. No, go ahead. Well, I've said that you like. Yeah, that yes. I like. I, mean, I wouldn't be interviewing them if I didn't like them, okay. if, I, if I didn't admire okay. them, okay. if I didn't respect them. <laughs> you know, Slim Big Slim 400. Um, I mean, Young Greatness. Um, Nipsey Hussle. Uh, you did Vaughn? Uh, King Vaughn. No, we, we were scheduled to do Vaughn, but we never we never got to do him. Um, it, it was in the process. Uh, I was supposed to interview Pop Smoke. We, we were talking on the phone a couple of days before he got killed. Um it's pretty freaky for you. It's, it, it's, it, it's huh? sad, yeah. Because I, you know, I, I grew up in the suburbs. I didn't grow up with my friends dying at a young age. You know, what yeah, I'm saying? yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, know, I, I mean, I, my friend died of a cocaine overdose. But yeah, not, like my yeah, yeah no, but yeah, not, it's like not yeah. gunfire. Right, it's like murder. It's like snatched away type shit. Yeah, yeah, it was sad, and you know, uh, he leaves behind two kids. Um, they're naming a street after him, which is dope. He was I'm buried. Like a, tear like, up. <laughs> he was, I think he was buried in a gold casket. Yeah, I didn't go to the funeral. Yeah. But I'm about to tear up. Like it's just it's it's intense. Um, I feel like well, I think the last 
major tragedy, not to undermine um, anything else that went on in Memphis that was a tragedy to others, but it was like Lorenz, Lorenz and, right? Like as far as murder or fucking Martin Luther King, you know, it's like, damn, like this is cold blooded. And that's all I got to say. And it's sad. R.P. Dolphin. You know, and when this and happened. That ain't, that's not even enough. Yeah. I'm over the whole R.P. shit. I mean, you know, and once this happened, my interview with Boosie started to like pop up everywhere. The, you know, how most rappers get killed in their own city, how people get hi 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 hypnotized that. with hatred and so forth. You know, most rappers die in their own city, man. It's a fact. And, um, you know, you have haters who who was in school with you and, and they mad because they was on, they was in that, in that third grade class with you, but they don't have the same hustle as you. You know, they hate you for no reason. They hate you for... They hate you for your success. It be the, the guys who, you know, once dap you down when you when you had one song out. But when you, it, it, and they develop envy because they go home, they get out the car with, they, with, with, with their friend, with their other partner, and he listening to your music. They walk in the house, they girl listening to your music. They go downstairs, the kids doing a dance to your music. Now they are hypnotized with hatred. They are hypnotized with hatred. You know, and I remember me and Crunchy Black talked about this and he was like, listen, I don't oh, hang yeah. out in Memphis anymore. He's like, I know what it's about. You know, if I'm, I'm in and out. I don't really hang out in Memphis because uh, I found out the hard way that, you know, staying in Memphis and coming back home from big shows or doing big things and, being around the people who know you or being around you for a long time, went to school with you and, you know, like that, they sometimes don't appreciate you putting the city on. And I'm going to call you Glad right now because we're yeah. talking about CB. Talking about That's CB. my brother. You know right. what I mean? Glad. Real talk. When I hear CB say certain shit like that, it, it trains me to think, you know what I'm saying? Because he is a gangster. Oh, and yeah. I ain't talking about gang banging. I'm just saying I learned a lot from him. I've been knowing dude more than half of my life. And just how he even moved differently. And I'd be like, Crunchy, were we doing this? We were wild. Were we like this? He'd be like, nah, boo. We weren't this goddamn. You know, it's it's definitely no no code. It's it's, yeah. it's it's creepy. Do you still hang out in Memphis? Um, what do you mean, hang out? Do you go to What's Memphis? What's your definition of hang out? Go there for a few weeks. You know, go hit up weeks, your own. My family in Memphis, my mom, my yeah. cousin, yeah. So, you know, go hit up your favorite I, restaurants. I'm not, yeah, I mean go, I, go to your own neighborhood. You know, uh, I mean, go to the I, don't have, I don't have a neighborhood. <laughs> I'm not a clubber anyway. Just in general, I don't go to clubs in Hollywood. Okay. Hollywood weird. And I've been in LA for eight years. Okay. I'm not a clubber unless I'm getting some money. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, I definitely do bars in Midtown and stuff like that. But also, me being um, not living there, when I hear about it, I'd be like, what? No, no, no. And then when I go back, I'd be like, oh, it's definitely a different breed. Yeah, it's sad because, you know, the the one thing I actually forgot to mention, there was a, a comedian in Memphis named uh, mm. Demuni. You know what I'm talking about? I saw it on the internet. I don't yeah. know him. Yeah, this comedian, this Memphis comedian posted up a picture with him and um, Yo Gotti. Uh -huh. He's like, man, them folks just killed Dolph. I love I love Memphis. We so gangster. Mm -hmm. And he gets killed right afterwards. Did he post that picture with that caption? Yes. Yeah, he was just a young troll, you know? Yeah. Shit. To yeah. Like Takashi 69, but he came out with a thousand security guards, you know? Think dude was a young troll and they attached a guy. I don't, have, I don't know what's going on, man. I, I don't, I'm don't know either. Player. I'm just saying there's a lot of tragedy that's of course, happening right now. Of course you don't know. We don't know. But um, that was definitely fucked up. And like you said, you use the word mess. It's a lot of mess going on. But in the city of Memphis, it's a beautiful place. And I, I'm there all the time. I'm going back for Christmas. Mm. You know, but I don't pop up in places where I'm not being paid to be, like on some like hanging out and, yo, I'm in the hood. Oh, I did all that before. Yeah. Black Haven. From the time you joined Three Six Mafia, you were on six albums with them. When did I join Three Six? Around ninety four. Ooh, or so. there you go. Right around okay. that time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm just saying, all right. Trying to see where you went with it, glad. <laughs> Mystic Styles, Chapter One, The End, Chapter Two, World Domination. Tear what the was Club your favorite Thugs. three six album or Gangsta Boo song or verse? Do you have like? Cause me, you cool, just off the grid. 
But do you like, yo, my my girl snap? Do you even if it's some run the jewels shit? Like, do you even have a favorite gangsta boo verse or a favorite three six mafia song? Or you just like? Well, I, I got, like I got introduced. Like a, uh, I mean, I got introduced with Tear the Club Up. Okay, which one? Though? We had a few of the the one they were doing the commercials for. You know, when when you guys first signed uh, to Loud, I think. <laughs> yeah. Tear the club up. Tear the club up. The one that you can't perform in no, clubs. No, we performed it at Versus. No, I understand that, but I mean, no, when it was way. out, it during was that time. Yeah, no, yeah. Fact. <laughs> I remember, I, I talked to a few that people was. about this. <laughs> where the club would say, you are, cannot com- perform this song. And then y'all would perform the song anyway. Big fat. Because you already got your money. Because <laughs> Paul and Juicy Patty, man. <laughs> right. Hey, Patty, man. <laughs> well, in terms of why you left, I mean, according to the news, you know, according to Wikipedia. Flair, we done did a thousand of these interviews. I ain't finna say shit about no threes is mopping why I left three and all the uh, ex- extra shit that ain't got nothing to do with this 2021 20, shit. Okay, you don't wanna talk about it. Fair enough. Talk uh, about what? I, I, you know what? When I do this, let me show you this. When I do this, I zip my lip up and I throw away the key. Up. But look, I do this. So let me do this. Ask, oh. ask your question. Okay. Glad. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, at one point you left. What, you know, in terms of you, you be, everyone becoming cool again. Uh, what led yeah, to you to everyone to everyone becoming cool again? Yeah, that's a boring now, question. Okay, yeah, boring that's, question. That's, okay. But no, keep this in the script though. Okay. All right. <laughs> but yeah, like it's family, bro. Like busy bone type shit. Yeah. You yeah, take your pills type shit, you know? Well, uh, Juicy J so, said something interesting recently. He said, uh, "There we go. Let's get some recent shit." He said that drugs were the reason why Three Six Mafia. I broke didn't up. see that. Show, you got the clip? Show me. Well, I got a quote. He says, "You ain't got the clip." Well, I think it might have been a written interview, but oh. he said, "This is a quote from Juicy J. You could call him yourself no and, and verify." No, you. He he's said, on the other show, Glad. He said, "From heroin to meth to cocaine, Ooh. all kinds of pills. A lot of drugs were consumed during the times we were together. When everyone was sober and shit." So, what was the on... question? Why did he say all this? Like, I'm sorry, because I well, I he's gotta... talking about the breakup of three six. Five. Okay, the breakup of three six. Three okay. six, right? He said, "From, you from heroin to, to me meth about. to cocaine, all kinds of pills. A lot of drugs meth? were consumed." Hold on, meth. Yeah, he said. Wow, that's new to me for real. Yeah. Hey, man, who, who reported that? Juicy J. <laughs> No, who reported that? Where are you pulling it up from? Uh, I don't care about your computer. Okay, hold your on. Your little MacBook. Hold on. I'm yeah. about to tell you. Because it's new. Because I it's, it's recent, right? Yeah, this is recent. This was. Can uh, you play a clip? It's not a clip. It's a written interview. It's from November 30th, 2021. So he did a written interview. I zipped my lip through it again. With Uproxx, he said, uh-huh. he said a lot of drugs were consumed during the times we were together. When everyone was sober and shit, everyone's on the same page. But when cocaine's involved, things change. But I'm not pointing... A figure at Well, no, nobody. go back to the meth and heroin now that, the, like, read the whole Juicy J quote that you said. From heroin yeah. to meth to cocaine, all kinds of pills, a lot of drugs were consumed during the times that we were together. So that was the breakup of 3 6? Is that what you said? That's, that's what he's saying. I'm not saying it. Oh, that's interesting. He said, uh, he said, um, but I'm not pointing a finger at nobody. Uh, can't think of anything else that would have caused the group to break up and said, which was why people wasn't showing up at the studio. Business was crazy. Everything's folding. It was the drugs. Oh, okay. Okay. So he said the drugs were the reason why 3 Oh, broke okay. Up. Well, you know, that's his quote. It's not mine. So That's his quote. The end. I come. Okay. So you can't comment on that. Well, that's his quote. Yeah. I, I don't, I've never done Beth or heroin. I mean, that's his quote. And I respect you. Okay. Cocaine you've dabbled in here and there? Absolutely. Okay. Why not? I, I've never tried it. That's on you. You tried yeah. a lot of other shit, though. You I've tried other shit. Black no, pussy. I mean, you know. No, but they're black cats. <laughs> That's cocaine, baby. I mean, you know, I've tried ecstasy. I've tried acid. We're talking I've done about mushrooms. the drugs. We're talking, yeah. yeah, I, yeah. I've done hard drugs. I, I just yeah. haven't done cocaine. I respect, my friend, I, my, you know, if that's my, what he my, said. My, my homie overdosed off cocaine and died. That's why I never so, tried cocaine. Well, my my girlfriend, Speaker Fox, you know, you are you familiar with, at least through me, because you mean you cool. Speaker mm-hmm. Fox, DJ Speaker Fox. I know that is, yeah. Female DJ Atlanta. Yeah. I, I don't know her personally, but I know who it is. Right. Um, yeah, she was sober for 10 years when I met her. Mm-hmm. And she fell off the wagon, was on pills. And, you yeah. know, so, yeah, I've had all kind of experiences with um, seeing people fall off the wagon and overdose and stuff like that. But if that's his quote and that's what he say, that's his experience. <laughs> it's not mine, so. Well, I mean, 3-6, I felt, was the first really big, you know, rap group that really talked about hard drugs. You think that? I think so. 
Well, see, a lot of times I be living in an out of body experience. So it's like, fuck, I'm like Lola, but I'm like, fuck, I'm gangsta boo. So, you know, maybe we did, maybe we didn't. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I didn't I know about like, syrup. <laughs> you know, when when sis- you didn't, si- you si- fucking cap sipping on some scissor was the first time. We got that from Houston, man. You I know cap. you got it now, from this Houston. This is what people talking but, about. But, but, oh, I see. This is what folks talking about. You cap. I'm capping. <laughs> no, I mean, listen. I'm, I'm sure a lot of Houston artists talked I'm about I'm syrup, but no song got as big as sipping on some syrup. We had Bum B on that motherfucker and Pimp exactly. C. What are you talking about? Exactly. Yeah. But exactly it was still. It, but it was a three six mafia song. Yeah, but we had the the originators on that motherfucker who was talking about that shit. That's some Houston shit. DJ Screw, you don't fuck with DJ Screw. DJ I'm Screw, saying like to a certain I, I, degree, but, yeah, I don't, but I don't, I'm not fuck. into Screw music. So what? I've never tried. I've never no. I, I tried Lean. No, I tried Lean one one time. Me too. R- Riff Raff gave me some lean and I fell asleep. Vlad. He's told the story. I, I, I tried lean one time on God. Yeah. Um, I was um, at a college dorm with my white homeboy named Jared. And I was sit- sitting in the chair like this. And I was like, you know what? This is not me. I need Red Bull and vodka. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? So I get you. Yeah, it's just, you know. But I feel like that's more of a huge, um, you know, if you're saying three six mafia like turn people out to do drugs, as far as when you say drug lean, I'd be like, uh, that's Debbie Downer. I would say if anything, it would be mm-hmm. cocaine. You guys talked about cocaine a lot. The end. Yeah, and Here. I felt like no other rappers talked about cocaine. You need to. I don't know. I listen to a lot. You only listen to rap. You don't listen to rock. I listen to rock, but I'm talking about rap. There you go. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about rap right now. Period. Oh God. Yeah. yeah. You know, I mean, there's yeah. lots of rock songs that talk about what? cocaine. Um, you know what? I was turned out. Three Six Mafia turned me out. Yeah. This <laughs> is a good, a good clip for your ass. You got well, turned out. Got so many clips. <laughs> Gave my nigga a clip. But yeah, no, but for real though, yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, it, it is what it is. You I mean, you guys were getting how you live. Uh, yeah, you guys are you being honest. That? You what guys you are being honest that? in your music. You know, and, and I think I, I uh, what you mean by that though, being what? honest. I mean, because a lot of people think we're devil worshippers too. So when yeah. you say being, because like Lord, like we have, well, when I say Lord, rest in peace to the King. But he talk about flesh, and and I talk about being the devil's daughter and stuff. So when you say getting it how we live, it's in our music. You got to be specific, Glad. Well, I'm saying I forgot who who said it. It was some interview read a while ago, but basically someone in Three Six was saying how a lot of rappers do coke, but no one was, you know, brave enough to talk about it I in their think song. Memphis motherfuckers arrogant like that, to say that. The arrogant. Yeah, we arrogant <laughs> as shit. Motherfuckers been talking about, yeah, yo. But also, on some, on some real shit, I don't know, bro, you know? I just, like, I'm, I was in my Memphis bubble and my Three Six Mafia bubble. Well, uh, when I interviewed DJ Paul a while back. But what's your point, Glad? My point is that we're talking about it. About, but why, about everything. Though? But no, because I want to help you. I'm, I'm trying to help you I want to like what like what are you like the drugs and the conversation like well, what I mean, are you I mean, seeking I mean, well, from? Because we I want to why three six broke up. You know, originally no, we was and you was, and then you mentioned Jay and he was some of the drugs, and then you went from there. So where are you going? Do you do you? I mean, like because it's like I feel like three like it's nothing. Um, it's nothing new under the sun. Yeah. So it's like rap rock, like whatever, whatever. You know what I'm saying? So for you, honestly, like I'll bullshit aside, you like what's the what's the real like what do you want to know? Cause you got the greatness of your presence. So just ask me like, did you quote the whole I, Juicy J quote? Yeah. So I, I, I'm just looking at the and meth and all that type of shit. I'm like, whoa, that's mind blowing to me. I, I, I don't even know what I, I I've think. Never, I've never tried I meth think either. Heroin looked like um. Brown. I've never liquid. tried heroin. Hell, not me. <laughs> I was just like, never tried heroin. Like, <laughs> what have you never tried, seen... Glad? I- I've tried. Ex- it. Have you did ecstasy? I have. Molly. Isn't that kind of the same thing? Is ecstasy Molly kind of the same? Kind of sort of. I don't know. I'm not white. I, I, I think by the time Molly, kind of I, by the time it was acid, called have Molly, you did acid? I've done acid. In fact, the, the the first time I did acid is the day the night I decided to be a DJ. Doing acid kind of triggered something in me, changed that something. That was lit. Yeah, I was a Burning Man. 
I was a Burning Man. You know about Burning Man? Yes, I've. I was high off acid at Burning Man, and I got That's in a dope, drum. Bro. I got in a drum circle around while everything was on fire. <laughs> <laughs> and me, me and this dude was drumming, and everyone came in and started dancing. And I'm like, ooh, Those I like this feeling. Second. I like this feeling. I like this. So, um, acid mushroom, mushrooms. Like what's uh, the? Because I, 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 I fucking just, I did. I never did acid. I did ecstasy before. Mm -hmm. Ballers, the song Ballers. We be on some twanky twank. Remember that song? Mm -hmm. My whole verse. I was on X. I was eighteen years old. Okay. X out. Yeah. I said, I don't fuck up. I was like, oh, I, said, I was on X. I was like, oh, what did I say about X or some shit? But anyway. But it's like I fell off all this shit because I'm not going I don't like to swallow something that I don't know what's gonna do. And I don't know it's so weird nowadays. But I just recently took a mushroom. Yeah, what'd in you September. think? What'd you think? Mushrooms are fun. I've tried mushrooms a bunch of times. But this is like my first time. Have you did mushrooms? I have. What's the difference in cause it's like, man, like you tell me you I, became I a DJ yeah. behind fucking acid. acid. They say fucking um what's the dude name with the apple shit? The Steve, who's Steve Jobs? Yes. I just feel like like psychedelics are kind of mm, judged a little, like pit bulls. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like that? Like I mean, it's like a judge. Like People are judged of doing a... But what's the difference to you? Acid, mushroom. If you had a choice. Mushroom, uh, yeah. I, I tried acid once and I was done. I'm like, this is, this is, this is a rough drug. Mushrooms, Ooh. I think, more mellow. Sort of more of a, you know, you could mix Michael it Michael Dosen you know. or... No, I mean, I, I had it once when I just popped it in my, you know, just popped the caps in my mouth. Other ones I, I had once in tea, which was a little more smooth, you know. I used to, I was doing mushrooms every weekend for a while. Yeah, for like, so for acid, like, you know. that's, that's terrible. I mean, it's not terrible, but it is what it is. You know, <laughs> like, like I, I remember me and Paul were on the phone, uh, you know, a couple months ago. and We, we were talking Sorry, about different drugs. Look at Paul. Hey, Vlad, you a real boy. They don't even know it. <laughs> Him and Paul went on to a different drug. Paul be living vicariously through motherfuckers. <laughs> I, I fuck with Paul. Paul, like, like me, me and Paul are, are he, real. He, dude, real it, I mean, Paul fucking raised me. He hate to fucking admit it, but it's like, that's his fucking fault. He didn't raise me. I'm Lola Mitchell. I'm Cedric and Veronica's daughter, but I'm definitely a spot of DJ Paul. Yeah, but we, we, were, we were talking about drugs and he was saying how like, you know, the difference between something like a cocaine and a pill is that if you start taking coke and you start to feel like, okay, this is too much, you'll just stop. Once you pop a pill, that's it. Yeah, that's it's why I don't you. fuck a pill. Yeah. It's in you. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm yeah. good. I, and I, I, I never, uh, I mean, I've I popped ecstasy, but I've never done like oxy or. or... What what would be considered an opiate? Like a. Um, oxy. Or um, like a, is a Xanax? Zan, uh, perks. Have you, what's Percocets? an Adderall? Have you ever, like. Adderall, Adderall is, that's a little different. Cause that's like what white folks do in college or something. Yeah, it's just like focus really, and not go. Yeah, and you know what? I shouldn't like say that. that. I'm sorry because honestly, like my nephew, um, I remember he was taking Adderall to, you know, and he was just like Auntie Lola. I don't. He didn't like the way it made him feel. He felt different. Yeah. And we told him like, you don't have to do that, nephew. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, uh, pills they, they hit different. Like so. Yeah, I, I don't rock with pills. Uh, you know, and, and by the time Molly came around, it was called Molly. I was already off the whole ecstasy. That way, same, you know, same. Because yeah. with, with ecstasy, also, I realized I just have too much shit to do. Once in my the life. double stacks and triple stacks and all this yeah. shit start coming, I was yeah, like, you know what? The I'm next drunk. day, you're so fucked up. I'm like, I'm I was good. just like, I can't function I the next shit, day. Grow off up. Of, I'm straight. Ecstasy. No yeah. thing. Well, uh, one thing that Paul said in one of our interviews uh, a while back, he said that Memphis has a dark energy. Mm, I saw that. I saw that. Yeah, the darkness of Memphis is what makes it so cool, though. Hmm. Because that's what created our music. We could have never made songs like that hmm. in another city. That we wouldn't even have those vibes. The darkness of Memphis and, you know, the rain and stuff like that is it, what made it. I wouldn't, ta I wouldn't take none of it back. I'm so glad I was born there and raised there because it, it puts something in you. Hmm. It puts something in you. That's why I tell you one thing about people from Memphis. They can go to any city and survive. And I'm talking about come up and be like the man in their city. Do you agree? Yes. Explain. Um, I can't really explain. It's just kind of like it just is what it is, um, to be honest. It's like it's a beautiful place. You have to be there. You never been. Never been. Shame on you. Shame on me. Glad, <laughs> a.k.a. Vlad. Like, for real, like, Memphis is dope as fuck. I mean, it's the home of the blues. Barbecue, like stuff like that. It's a beautiful place. I mean, it birthed three six five. Yeah, gangsta boot. Yeah, eight ball MJG. You know, 
Al Green, Zen, they say Elvis, but he from Mississippi. But um, it's definitely it's like it's Cutthroat City. Well, yeah, I remember when I interviewed That's what they uh, call it. interviewed Project Pat recently. I saw that great, great interview, great interview. Have He's, you ever so, met him? Yes, I have. Well, not that was was that your friend? You you've been like rotating us for a while, yeah. so that's not your friend. I'm, I met Pat when I interviewed Three Six Mafia. When they were doing their reality show. This was like so you met Computer too, huh? You know I think Computer. So, yeah. I think so. He the one there. who motherfucker yeah. pierced through the, yeah, he, the he was fight. There. Yeah. Well, uh, I remember I interviewed him in front of the the Beverly Hills sign. Um, yeah, you got Pat, man. That yeah, was dope. Pat. Pat is dope. And he says something. He goes, look. He goes, what people don't realize is Memphis. You know. Maybe not now, but back in his day, it was so dangerous that you could run up on a young dude and say, "Here's two hundred dollars to go shoot up, go shoot up this house. Here's the gun." And the guy would be like, "Who am I shooting? It doesn't matter." He goes, "All right, you could literally pay someone two hundred bucks yeah. to go shoot." It. You know, he, he was saying how Juicy J got pulled over by the cops and they find an illegal gun in the back of his car. Uh huh. And they're like, why do you got this gun? And he's like, it's just so dangerous out here. And uh-huh. they're like, okay. They threw the gun back in the seat and said, we're not looking for you and drove off. Juicy got pulled over. You know, this was before he had blown up. And the cops actually found a legal gun on him. Yeah. And they said, uh, you know, we're not looking for you. And why do you have a gun? And he goes, it's dangerous. Yeah. And they were like, all right, here's your gun back. Here's your illegal gun back. Yeah. And, and the police even understood how dangerous it was. Man, let me tell you something. Man, it's da- listen. Back then, see, the crack gang was out, so everybody had money, you know. So if I can't get you, I'm gonna kidnap your mama. And people doing that. That's how it was going down here. Imagine me, a little black girl from Memphis, Lola Mitch, aka Gangsta Boo, in the middle of this shit. In the middle of this shit. <laughs> Is that an accurate description you feel back back when you were, you know, during that era? No. Um, for me, I feel like it's worse. It was worse I feel like, yeah. I mean, really? Yeah, I didn't have no smoke. Maybe because I was <laughs> in the middle of protected with the gang, you know? Yeah. 36. But yeah, no, I never had smoke in Memphis at all. I'm like, I'm younger than all of them, you know? Hmm. Um, in a sense where it's like, I'm st- I'm a woman and they were definitely overprotective and focused too. Very extreme focused businessmen. So if they had time for the street shit, that was that. And when when it was time to work, it was time to work. But for me, Memphis is way more worse. It's like no code. I was around, man. Pimp players and drug dealers. Pimp players and max. It was like, I mean, because, you know, it's a lot of robbing going on in the city, you know. But it's not Memphis. uh, It's been cut, though, for a very long time. But it was more, it's kind of like iron your pants, right? With a crease or fucking take them shits out the dryer. Coin toss. Mm. Same shit, different toilet. Yeah. Do you think it's worse now? I mean, when you look at what happened to Dolph and how Memphis is right now, do you think it's worse now than like the 90s or about the same? I would say pull your pants out the dryer or iron your shit. Same shit. Memphis going to be Memphis. Take it how you want to take it. Well, you have a new song, Sucker Free. Uh-huh. Tell me about it. Uh, I fucking freestyled it and I just like released it. Just for like, cause I don't really release music, Vlad, man. I don't be like, I want to do it, but it's like, uh, you know, I procrastinate all the time. I'm on my Lola shit. I do all kind of stuff behind the scenes. You know, I get paid for all kind of samples. I tour from the jewels. I have a fucking property I ran out in Memphis. Um, I'm just so fortunate and blessed with stuff that I have going on and I live a private life. Sometimes when I release music, I'd be like, oh shit. And I wanted to have an impact and instead of going under the radar. But also that is could be my curse. So not a curse, but yeah, no, it's no curse. But you know what I mean? Like more of a, I procrastinate a lot. Okay. So I just released it for free and I had a comment, motherfucker said, uh, because I put it on sound, I started SoundCloud <laughs> like three days ago. Dude said, uh, he said, boo, he said, you too big for SoundCloud. Some shit, uh, Apple Music, some shit. It was like, I was like, I'm too big to give you something for free. 
the fuck is you talking about? You don't think I could stream? It was just bizarre. Yeah. So yeah, Sucker Free is like something I just gave out to the fans. I orchestrated the whole record. I composed it. I hired Drummer Boy. I arranged my vocals and it's called Sucker Free. Dope. So Drummer Boy actually produced it. Yep. Nice. And I got a sample from a couple of people. But it's it's like a composed sample. It wasn't like a, yeah. a sample sample. It was like real life instruments. Cause I compose, honey. So is there a project coming out, an album, mixtape? The blueprint, but I don't know when or what. I did a, a reality TV show, Vlad. Really? We'll talk about that another time. We'll pick back up on that. Okay. It's coming out in February. Okay. Can you say what it is? No. Okay. Not now. Not now. Maybe Fair later. enough. Fair enough. <laughs> but yeah, um, I got a lot of cool stuff going on, and I do a lot of stuff behind the scenes, but I'm tapping into the TV world. Okay. That's what it is. <laughs> Gangster Boo, appreciate you coming you, in. I appreciate that. Appreciate you Sucker coming free, in. Gangster Boo. Congrats on the verses. You know. What did you think about it? Like I saw the 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 drama. Like, were you like excited to see me? Of course, I was excited to see the whole thing. I mean, you know, I, like, I know, but you didn't know I was gonna. You don't know who gonna show up and stuff like that. But when you saw your girl, yeah, you like? of course, of course, you've been to my house. You know, back in the day, I don't live there anymore. But yeah, it's a blessing though. Like I'm, you know, I'm still the same OG. Yeah, I'm across the street. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, to, to really see all those all those big songs, like, you know, like, for example, like when my dad died on my way to the funeral, I listened to Crossroads and cried in the car. You know what I mean? That's like, that's just big. one of those songs that, like, that was the song I listened to to really put me in that moment. Wow. You, you know, so, so it was such an important night. And, you know, for example, like, it wasn't until the last few years that I realized how many artists have sampled or redone Three Six Mafia songs, huh. you know, like I mean, for example, like interviewing Project Pat, like "Don't Save Her," she don't want to be saved. J Cole just redid that well, whole. They hook. forget, child. They definitely forget, child. Yeah, Thank you, know, you for like, um, the money. When Drake did the boy with Black Boy JB, like he pretty much redid uh, Project Pat's uh, song, essentially his verse. You know, he interpolated. It's very bizarre. Like not not bizarre in a negative way. It's more like it's surreal. It's like shit. It's surreal. Memphis, like uh, that's why you gotta come to Memphis and get yeah. that drip. Travis Travis Scott, <laughs> he 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 redid like Tear the Club Up. Oh uh, well, he didn't redo that. He sampled it. Well, well, no, it was like fuck the club up or whatever he yeah, said. Yeah, but but you guess also what? Check. <laughs> right, look at my name. It's Lola <laughs> Mitchell exactly. is no, I'm I like, remember, whoa. Yo, no, I remember <laughs> I called I called Paul. I'm like, yo, Paul, you know that like you're crazy on, to say, yo. I'm like, I ain't even on this motherfucker. I get a check from this. Exactly. exactly. That way, yeah, the blueprint. That exactly. way. Exactly. Exactly. And uh, I mean, like, uh, thank you, Vlad. Yeah. You know, I mean, shit, ASAP Ferg redid one of your songs. You know, man, I mean? like, it's just like, just so it's like, man, Memphis, man. I think it's a, it's, a, it's grimy. It's a, but also New York have a culture, right? Gr like, it's cultures everywhere. And like, certain parts of certain cities is going to give you that smoke. But Memphis got a certain type of smoke that everybody came motherfucking blaze to. And that's just that. <laughs> That's how we're going to end it. Gangster Boo. Hey! Till next time. That way. Peace.